tell us a little bit about yourself and about your very interesting job with Orbital Outfitters. All right, well, um, I am their biomechanical engineer, which effectively means that it's my job to uh, not break people when they go into space. Um, it's an incredibly hostile environment, and uh, even when you're inside a vehicle, uh, so any, anything could go wrong, really. And in, in that case, you don't want to find yourself, um, for all intents and purposes, naked to, to the elements when the elements are not the same ones that we have on Earth. What are some of the problems that you might encounter? Oh, goodness. Well, it, it depends really heavily on what it is that you're doing. So um, if you are in uh, orbit, full orbit, you are looking at um, radiation. Normally, uh, the Earth protects us from that. You are looking at uh, temperature fluctuations, or temperature extremes, I should say, um, both hotter than what we can withstand and colder than what we can uh, withstand. You are looking at, um, uh, well, I guess that the number one problem is there's, there's no air pressure around you. Um, and that actually drives most of the engineering uh, decisions that we have to make on, on suits because um, you have to apply enough pressure, but not, which incidentally is not um, the same amount of pressure that you would necessarily find at sea level or even on the top of a very uh, high mountain. You can actually go a little lower than that, although the lower pressure you go, uh, the more you have to pre-breathe oxygen, or else you might get the bends, which is the same um, nitrogen bubble problem that divers have going from very high pressure uh, underwater to, to sea level pressure on top. So there's a trade-off there um, with the fact that the higher pressure uh, you are on the inside, the greater the diff pressure air uh, pressure differential is between the interior and exterior of your suit and the stiffer the material is going to become because of that because it's trying to contain all this pressure in a, in a relatively small space. So when you think about say a balloon, you know, let's imagine one of those, um, those long sort of spaghetti balloons. You inflate them and then you can twist them, you can bend them, you can make an entire balloon animal. That's a very low pressure between sea level on the outside and the extra that you've pumped into the inside. In a spacesuit, the differential between what we need to survive, even you know that that tiny range where it can, you know, we can still be okay and it's lower, um, the differential between inside and nothing, you start getting into uh, pressures that behave more like you're inside a giant, uh, you know, inner tube. You're inside a bike tire almost. Now, numerically, it's not that bad, but in practice, imagine trying to make a balloon animal out of a bike tire when it's inflated. It's just incredibly difficult to move. And there are a great number of, of problems that, that fall out of this. So, you know, the very first space suits that they made when they just sort of made them, you know, like stick figure shaped is you would inflate like this and then you can't move at all. So the, the next thing they did is said, okay, well this is initially, it was for high altitude pilots. So then they did it sitting shaped. Well then when you're walking around, you're, you're you know, when you're on uh, ground level, that's fine because it's, it's not pressurized yet, hopefully. But then you're still, you still can't do things. It's very hard to move your fingers. Um, just, and a lot of what you need to do is, is movement. Um, it's less of an issue when you are sitting in a pilot's seat. Um, then you, you need to be able to do this. You need to be able to reach you know, forward. But let's say you are um, in an extravehicular environment. Let's say you're operating on the Hubble or something like that then you're b being stiff, that, that's critical. When you're, when you're dealing with these incredibly delicate instruments, you have to be able to move. You, and furthermore, let's say, okay, great, I can move. How hard is it to move? You know, if you, if you, if you grab one of those stress balls, you can squeeze it really tight, no problem, for you know, two minutes, three minutes. And then depending how strong you are, it's, oh my God, how long do I have to keep doing this? Imagine, imagine squeezing a stress ball for, a six, for six hours effectively. You, you just can't deal with that. And astronauts train for that by squeezing stress balls just over and over and over. Um, so that, that's a very difficult issue and uh, it, it involves a lot of work on uh, geometry, the actual shape of the suit itself. Um, because if you're not optimizing the actual shape to the person who's inside it, you have to start using these mechanical hacks to get yourself to move. So if you, um, some of them are, are fairly straightforward hacks, you know, sensible given the environment. Anything is going to want to inflate to be a sphere, effectively. So if you look at your hand, 
this is this is very round. So so the the flat pattern is just going to effectively be a circle in the palm of your hand. When that inflates, it's going to inflate out like this. It's going to balloon out, and then you can't bend at all. It's just like if you've ever blown up a latex glove. It's exactly what happens. The fingers, fortunately, are, are uh, radially symmetrical along the axis of your finger, so they're going to push out this way, they're going to push out that way, but it's still roughly finger-shaped. But what they do on the palm is they actually have a bar. You, you, most most spacesuits do this. Is they have a bar that runs across the top, and then it has a slight concavity in on this side to maintain that shape. You can bend around that point like that. Um, but some of the more some of the uglier hacks that you get. Um, perhaps first I should mention, what you're looking at when you look at a suit from NASA is the cover layer. That, that, that white layer with the patches, that's what you put on over the, the pressure envelope, over the pressure layer, to, uh, that's the thermal micrometeoroid garment. So that uh, protects you from radiation, that does a lot of the, um, prevents, well, depending on what you're doing, you're actually more likely to overheat in space than you are to, to get too cold because normally heat con convects off of us from air. And heat travels incredibly slowly uh, when it doesn't have a medium to transfer through. So you have to radiate heat away from yourself. And it just doesn't work that fast. You're actually much, if you were to be chucked out, um, chucked out a, a space capsule like they do in the movies and they immediately ice up. That's actually not exactly what would happen to you because you contain enough heat that's stored in you. It would feel very cold to you, absolutely, but you're actually not losing all that heat initially. It would take a long time and we generate enough heat when we're moving around that you're, you're much more likely to overheat. So that's why they have a cooling garment inside. But so it protects you from radiation, it protects you from um, the thermal extremes, and it protects you from um, orbital debris and micrometeoroids, which are incredibly tiny and in traveling at just mind-boggling speeds and are more damaging than a bullet. It's like someone standing next to you and shooting you. Um, so so th that's, that's what you're looking at. And that can look, you know, depending on what it is, pretty nice. It's, you know, it's white, it's shiny, it's got patches on it. But when you take that off, you, you, could, you could take that off, and as long as you weren't worried about um, getting hit with micrometeoroid or you know, one of the other problems, you'd be fine. You, you can live in that. That's actually not the fully operable layer that if, if you were to take that off. And what's inside is uniformly hideous, actually. They, they look pretty bad. There is no such thing as an elegant pressure layer. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's, it's you know, NASA or one of the Russian suits or anything. They all look like something you, a crazy person cobbled together in their basement. So it's a good thing there are the layers there because everyone would be like, what are you wearing? That's awful. Um, but if, if you do take that off, you can see all the, all the interconnections. There is lacing. Um, depending on the suit, there is cabling. There's um, a tether. In, in, in many suits. Again, there's you know, enough design differences between them that some of them will have one thing, others will have another thing. Um, you'll actually, some of them have um, like a tether. So when everything expands uh, on the inside, it's not only expanding radially out, it's also expanding um, along the, that axis. So when you're standing up, the effect is that everything, the whole suit, like normally the neck ring and the helmet is sort of sitting on your shoulders, that will pop up. So if you don't want to be peering over the inside of your helmet, like Kilroy, you actually have to yank it down. So they're, they're usually like tethers that run down the middle and sort of up, up the butt crack and up your back and grab either side of that to keep everything down where you can see through the helmet. So that's under there. Um, there are stress risers that you can put in the sh shoulder movement is an incredibly challenging problem. That's actually one of the things Orbital Outfitters did. Uh, was a, a, a contract for NASA because they were having shoulder um, mobility problems. Um, on Constellation, they had a, an actual a, a bearing. So, a, you know, it, it was a, a full disconnect that allowed the arm to swing all the way around, which is actually great for mobility. It solves that problem. Um, you're just, you know, swinging it however you want to, but it's, it's a hard metal bearing. So when you're launching, you're lying on your back and this thing is digging into you. So, okay, it's uncomfortable. It's not like astronauts can't handle discomfort. But what if you're in a capsule 
and you're landing hard on your back. I mean, what is that going to do? Are you going to break something? Are you going to, even if you don't break something, what if it's a water landing? And, or, you know, it's, it's better to break something than to die, obviously. In the grand scheme of things, one wouldn't consider a broken bone all that bad when you look at everything that can happen to you. But it suddenly becomes life-threatening if you're in an off-nominal water landing and you have to swim. You know, suits are meant to float, but who knows what's going to happen. So that is, it is actually a risk. So they wanted a soft shoulder. And uh, so we wound up working on that for them. And that's where superior geometry really is a, a, a tremendous bonus because then you're not relying on, on, on hard, hard objects that can, that can damage you, really.